I'm getting the pool situated. Over here at this park that I'm in, they're building a brand new bike trail. I took my, I don't know if you can see it, but I took my rubber stoppers off. The ground is actually froze, but right now I'm walking on pavement. <clears throat> but anyway, just up this road a little ways is where it starts, up around that corner right there. Just around the corner. So, I didn't bother to park there. There's better parking right there, right here. But anyway, this new bike trail gets you off that road right there. So when you're here in the summertime and the actual road traffic doesn't have to watch out for you, that's going to be nice. But anyway, so we're going to walk it. Let's go up here a little ways. There's people out here with bat bikes. I would have rode the mountain bike today on this because the ground is frozen. But it snowed this last night. So the mountain bike or yeah the mountain bike is staying right where it's at. But anyway, we're gonna I just want to get to the top of this hill. So you can get the idea of it. This trail is going to continue around and right over there is uh, of the building where you rent the bikes. <coughs> and so from here to there, there's no point in just showing you that. But anyway, let's walk this. You can see how they've already started working on it last year. I did see a bunch of deer tracks. But I was doing the intro at the same time. A bunch of deer tracks came right up this trail. Right here. Some right there, some right here. Some more over here. These are actually fresh. That's a big one. Wow, that's real big. That's a nice one. They went right through there earlier today. I have the drone with me, but as you can see, it's pretty foggy, and I'm not sure. <laughs> the point. Oh, there's deer tracks everywhere. Look at all this. That's crazy. We may have just missed them. We're coming back around over there. From over there, you just can't see it because of the fog. But we're going to sneak back around through those oak trees over there. It's been a while since I've done a hike. A long while, actually between work and a few other hobbies that I'm into. Jeepers creepers. Look at that. Let me hear, hold on. Let me put my footprint. There. Look at that. Is that crazy? That's one hoof inside another. It's a big boy. This is going to be a nice ride. This part right here, 
is also uh, part of a hiking trail. This you, this right here in front of us, not the black tarp, but the lake on the other side. It's called Sunset Lake. Um, there's trails that go all the way around it. This this was one of them. There's deer trails all over the place. We get up closer to the hill where the oak trees are. I won't talk. Maybe we'll sneak up on one. Snow is a little noisy. I don't know if you can hear it under my feet. We'll give it a shot. There, we kind of see the lake. Once the fog lifts, if it does, it's supposed to be pretty much overcast all day. Um, about 35, very little wind. As you can, well, maybe you can't tell, but. It's actually kind of nice wind-wise. What little there is is in our face right now. It's going to be coming from that direction all day. Up to five or six miles an hour. And in this area, five or six miles an hour is slight breeze. We don't get worried until it gets past 50 around here. The snow is melting pretty much as quickly as it fell. This started out as rain yesterday. All day yesterday it rained it was in the mid to high 40s and it was raining pretty good and then overnight it turned to this but there might be an inch I don't think so but maybe okay here I am Gavin the uh, trail that I was talking about that this bike trail is now part of continues on right through there. That's a hiking trail and continues on up over the hill and uh, gets into the oak trees. That's right, we're not going that way. I said when we get to the oak trees, I'll be quiet, but we're checking out this new bike trail. So. What you're looking at is pretty much what we're going to look at for a little while here. Other than that fat bike that rode on this already, we are pretty much the first people to see this trail with snow on it. And the deer. I'm way overdressed for this hike, so I am not going to be setting any speed records. I get overheated. This will probably be five miles or better by the time we go all the way back around. out of curiosity okay just want to make sure it was recording because there have been times look at that these guys just come through here this morning tore that up all right into that thicket over there huh. the 
there are a lot of deer in this place. <coughs> <coughs> Let's just spook them all the way, right? We needed this snow pretty badly. Everything is dry and dusty. Which explains why I was just hacking up a bunch of dirt. We're in the shop working a little this morning. Feels good to get out and stretch the old legs out though. I'll tell you. I shouldn't meet too many people. If any at all. I mean, it is Saturday. And like I said, it's kind of nice out. Well, either it's two mountain bikes or one mountain bike that's already gone down and back. There goes one car on the main road out there. So maybe I'll have company. So this section of the bike trail right here, this little section that I'm on right this very second, crosses the road to the main office, which is right up here a little ways, another 60, 75 yards. But all nothing but that right there they just plowed it under several times and uh, I don't know maybe they haven't filled it yet but it's pretty smooth to walk on so I don't know if it's been filled with any material yet because it's covered in snow but going to be quite a bike trail. I mean, you can drive two semis on this side by side. It's that wide. <coughs> it's, as right, it's as wide as the road out there, which is right there. I don't know if you can, you can kind of see it, but you can see it for sure. Right through there. That gate that we're coming up on is the uh, gate on the road to the main office. I think it's more a maintenance office than it is a tourist information center. Glad I brought these hiking poles. I don't know how annoying they are to listen to, but. listening to me right <laughs> yeah right here that's the main road right there outside there and that's the gateway to the main office which is out up there you could kind of see it through the fog but uh, there are all the maintenance equipment is also up there in another building so like I said not sure if it's more of a maintenance office that has some information I don't know but anyway back to the bike trail 
<coughs> so this section will be a little longer. I've already looked at this on top of map. Um, by topo map, I mean a drawing of where this trail is going to lay out as in relation to the park itself. <coughs> so I know where this is going. Where it ends up and all that. But I really didn't think they were even going to start building it until this coming year. So this will be ready for blacktop. I know it's not blacktop right now. It's not that smooth. Um, the tip of my poles are stabbing into firm dirt. So I know it's not pavement. I'm looking forward to riding it. It might make the bike trail just a little bit longer too. Just because it runs alongside the road now instead of in it. And truthfully, that road is horrible to ride on because it's all full of expansion cracks and holes. So, the bike trail is smoother to ride on because it's just pavement that people ride bikes on. It doesn't get beat up by heavy vehicles. But this is twice as wide as what it is on the main bike trail. Like I said, this is as wide as the road out there. So, maybe they're going to do a split hiking trail, biking trail. Just so the hikers and the bikers will have their own. Which kind of makes sense. I mean, you got the room to do it. It's nothing like I said, but, but that kind of land here. And you're only going to disturb it once. I mean, what little bit of field mice and stuff that you chewed up carving a road out was just making more food for other critters. And you're only going to do it one time. Once this has pavement on it, that's the way it's going to stay. Everything else will go back to nature. We might see some deer down in here. Stop here and take a quick look around. I've seen a lot of deer in there in the fall driving in. Riding a mountain bike around in here in the fall on that main road. That's a good thicket right there. But with this fog, I mean, there could be three or four standing there looking right at me and I wouldn't know. Because I can't see in that thicket any better than you can. Sneak around it.
There might have been a little bit of rut action, late rut action going on here because I just walked through all that and there's a lot of big hoof prints, like big right there, see? <clears throat> but it's kicking up a lot of dirt, like it's been jumping and you now twisting its body around. See how that right there? I don't know if you can see that or not, but there's a bunch of that kind of stuff. See how it was spraying dirt everywhere? It wasn't just coming up and out in there and running. It was bouncing and jumping around. Interesting. The other end of this is what I'm more interested in seeing how, how they brought it back up. Yes. Right now this is going just around this lowland right here, but going back right over there, which is odd because it's another swamp. <coughs> so I'm not sure how this is going to end up. Just trying to come out. I don't even think it's noon yet. <coughs> so, hmm. if we're lucky. We might be able to get the drone out. That's paw prints. To their dog or coyote. I don't know. There's no human tracks around here, but that doesn't mean anything. Just tracks 
constantness everywhere. And I mean all the time. But like I said, there are a lot of deer in this place. So none of this is surprising me at all. be long they'll figure out a way to use it and reroute their path. Slightly. I can see it a little further in the distance, but not a lot. But it is getting warmer. This park that I'm in, um, it has more landmass covered by water. In other words, the three lakes that are in this park cover more land area in the park than there is available for the public for hiking and biking. And yet, this park still has a six, or maybe now, seven mile bike trail, mountain bike trail, or bike trail, period. It's paved, so it's not just a mountain bike trail. It has a lot of hiking trails, and they're all easy. Including the bike trail. Pretty amazing for what it has to offer for, you know, 
you can put your feet on the ground and actually use as, as far as land. They put it together really well <coughs> for activities. The only thing I'm not sure of here is horseback riding. I've never seen anybody do it and I've never seen signs that show anything for horsebacking. So I don't think it's allowed here or offered, I should say. <clears throat> Why, I don't know. I mean, I think it's mostly because if people want to ride a horse, they want to ride for half a day. And to bring a horse here and, you know, get it all out of the trailer and some kind of makeshift stable area, get all that set up just to ride around a couple of half mile trails. Well, it really wouldn't be worth it to do that here. Okay, I didn't expect it to cross here. This is interesting. Huh. Yeah, we're coming up on the road. Yeah, just... The fog is lifting a little more. So maybe by the time we work our way back around to the van, I'm not gonna get the drone out. Oh, I see what they did. They ran alongside the road on the other side of the road. Okay. You probably can't see it yet because of the fog, but I see where they tore up the ground over there. I saw that when I came in, but I didn't put two and two together until right this second. I'm just surprised that they plowed right through this lowland right here because there's usually a lot of swampy area and a lot of birds and all that in here. But they did. I thought they'd actually go out around up there and then give us a little bit of a challenge to get up that hill and come down into the parking area up there. That would have been wicked cool. But I guess I want to make it easy for everybody. see all the rocks when we get over there. That's what caught my attention when I was pulling in. I was like, oh wow, I built a retaining wall. I had a retaining wall in my mind, uh, thinking, why is there a wall there? Okay. Pretty cool, but really odd. And I'll explain why I'm saying really odd here in a second. Okay, you can see the culvert, or maybe you can't, but there's a culvert right there. 
in this corner they put a culvert so the water could run through so that cost money that they may not have needed to do because all this fill that they put here just for that culvert I think could have been avoided if they just tied into this existing road that's right here to cross I don't know there has to be a reason why they did what they did but you can see right here right over there's the bike trail I mean to tell me that you couldn't have come right straight across over to this and avoided all that somehow I mean okay you're crossing right over it wow who am I to say what well, has to be a reason because logically that just doesn't make any sense when you already had an access road Carry on. But yeah, up here around the corner, we got some pretty cool stonework. I can see where this is going to be really muddy right here. We need to fill this more. It's holding water right here right now. So it needs to be another two and a half, three foot higher. That's where they need the culvert. <laughs> I haven't hiked in quite some time. Feels good to be out. Even though it's snowy. You know what's weird is Christmas is next week. And this is all the snow we have. And the ground just recently froze over the last three weeks. Otherwise, we were having 45 and 55 degree temperatures through the month of November. Yeah, I don't know to explain my self even a little more. You can see where all this is low on the other side of this road right here. I don't understand why they didn't have the bike trail come up on the high side of that. You can't quite see it maybe because it's boggy, but right on the high side of that and then come up onto this and come out right here on this parking lot. You could have avoided crossing the road where they did and avoided the cost of this brick wall or rock wall although this looks really cool I like it they did disturb I know a lot of deer crossed right here because of that pine or pine yeah that oak grove was that oak grove before they cut that road and it and they just walked right through here. So, all this work could have been avoided if they made the bike trail go around and come out on the top side of over there. Interesting. But, it's all engineered by the Department of Natural Resources, so they gotta have their reasons.
Okay, so we'll get up there a little further, but I think I'm gonna peel off of this because basically you see the road and you see this path. You see what's going on here. So <clears throat> looks to me like it's just gonna ride right along the entranceway until it meets up with the bike path down at the west side of the, the lake right here. So I'm not gonna walk that. I'll do another bike video come probably summertime. I probably won't do it in the spring just because they're gonna be working on it. But let's go this way. I like this back around. Get a little more, a little more steps under our butt. I really wish it was clear. Right up here, we're get around this corner up on top of this hill here. It's a perfect spot to launch the drone that overlooks this big lake right here. That we're not going to be able to see at all. <laughs> it's crazy that it's all foggy. Winter underwear under thick canvas bird hunting pants tucked into my rocky rubber boots with insulate winter socks. get up on here and turn and look across there anyway even though you can't see just because I want to be the first to put footprints yeah this would have been really neat with the drone uh, okay whatever Tell the wind blows. That ice is not smooth. It's really rough. But yeah, you can see right there. The bike trail just follows the road. So and look how much wider the bike trail is than the road. How's that for crazy? <laughs> That's all right though. We're not complaining. But anyway, let's continue. Carry on. Not gonna be much to look at, so it's all about what's directly in front of us. down through there that's where the deer lay down that wall that stone wall they made is right on the other side of that right over there that we walked by yeah, they walk right through there the deer do it's all oak trees a little of the 
like a little more, a little more each minute. But I don't think it's ever going to clear up enough to get the drone out today. For sure, not the amount of time that we're going to be here. That would have been cool though. Still a cool view. Sorry for the rock and roll and I'm walking downhill. Slipping and sliding. Luckily I have the hiking poles. I can barely, barely, barely see across the other side. I don't even know if you can. Probably not. But I can barely see the tree line. If I zoomed in, you could see it, but I don't want to. When I might got the camera on chest mount, it's just a pain in the butt to play with. There's deer pee or something. Something yellow. Maybe come out of the trees. I didn't see any hook marks. This is one of the hiking trails in this park. This little section right here is actually my favorite section in this whole park. This is the trail that goes back to the where we had the discussion about the access road. How I think it's odd that they didn't come right to the access road to this, but anyway. Um, you park out there and you walk that trail in. And this picnic table right here. I set up my fishing gear and my cook stove and all that right here. This dock, this boat dock, and this dock is out right here in the summertime. <clears throat> and there's never anybody here for some reason. I mean, it's a really cool place. They got the oak trees to hang out with. It's a little buggy, but it's buggy in this whole park really but yeah every time I come here I always get this spot because there's never anybody here oddly enough so I always go here <laughs> and I walk out and you can you know, I guess you can kind of see how um, shallow it is here I'm not going to walk on that ice because because, period. But you can see where the grass is coming up through. That happens quite a ways out. Probably 25, 30, 40 yards out. You can stand and need a waste deep water. So I walk out there quite a ways on the hot summer and just stand in the water and fish. In this park here, I think you got to throw everything back, except maybe, I don't know, the restrictions are odd, but I don't, um, I don't keep this here anyway, so standing out in the water and possibly losing them as compared to netting them on shore, I don't really care if I lose them, reeling them in, because I'm just there having fun. And I know I'm going to release it anyway. But this part of the trail right here, all spring and summer and fall, is just covered in goose poop and duck poop because they hang out here because it's shallow. They get in that grass line and eat all the frogs and little minnows and whatever else. 
so they get up on this trail here because it's the only thing that's mowed down where they can sit and hang out all day. Watch their youngins. Very odd and very lucky that we don't have any wind. Unusual as well. Well, you can kind of see. It might even be getting a little bit thicker now because now I can't even see across to the other side. Coming up on a, um, there's some more deer tracks, nice ones. But we're coming up on the picnic area, slash beach area. <laughs> yeah. No camping here, this is daytime use only. I'm gonna take a break while I get up here. The fishing pier is still out. I didn't expect that. They don't usually leave it out when the lake freezes. see deer in any of the wide open places it'll be here and I'm breathing kind of heavy from that hike I have to take my goggles off I'm wearing my ski goggles too yeah they got the fishing pier still out
kind of surprises me. Well, okay, part two, I guess. We just stopped here for a little bit. Um, I had a little something to drink. Took my hat off for a while, let the cool air get me. But now we're gonna head back out. Take it a little slower this time. So we came from over there, around that part of the lake, over there. Right down in there, there's a trail. We come up out of that. I went in there and took a little break for a little bit. Had something to drink, cooled off. The fog is lifting, but I don't know. Wind-wise, it's the greatest day for getting the drone out. Very little wind. Nothing that I wouldn't be able to control. But anyway, well, let me get my I wear ski goggles just because it's a lot more comfortable on your eyes. Stay on the trail. I know where I'm going. Well, the trail was a lot quieter, wasn't it? My body needed this, let me tell you. It's been a long, long time since I've done any kind of hiking. For a few reasons. Mostly work. Couldn't get away far enough to do anything. Interesting. Even today, being Saturday, there was a chance that I was going to work today. So that's why I'm only at a park close by. Yeah. And... van was broke down for quite a while and I just got it back actually about a week ago so that's the other reason I just couldn't get out to go anywhere far enough without a vehicle I did a lot of mountain biking, so that was good. No deer on this trail, surprisingly. Oop, it's a little slippery.
But speaking of vans, now that I have it back, it was a mechanical issue in the motor. I'm not going to bore you with the details, but. And I knew a guy that knew a guy <laughs> who was really good at fixing what the problem was with the motor. But he also works on pipelines. And he wasn't getting back until November. See that bird right there in front of us on that tree? You probably can't see it because not really zoomed in. I'm zoomed out as far as I can be actually. But anyway. So close I can get. They're usually really timid birds. He knows on no threat, he's already out of danger. You can't see him anymore, I'm sure. He keeps climbing that tree. Okay, so anyway, back to the van. Now that I have it back, I'm gonna be working on that and turning it into a camper van. And if it turns out to be something that I like, you know, camping in a van, I don't know. Um, there's another one that merged right in front of us. If it turns out to be something that I'm into, because I like camping, I like the outdoors, I like to be alone, I may just go and do van life. If I can set it up right. You know, I'm not all that far away from retirement. And being I'm single, I prefer to be alone to doing everything. That would be cool. As far as I think, it would be cool. A lot of people just, I don't know, they're not into the ruggedness of it, I guess. Or the, even the loneliness of it, a lot of people can't do that. I'm starting to feel this in my legs. Get a little subject change. But, uh, well, I mean, we can stay on the van life thing. I, I'm into it so much that I've actually um, started researching a lot of the equipment it takes, you know, solar wise, even generators and wattages. And if I go that route, um, by that, what I mean by if I go that route, if I decide to go with flip the switch electricity in my van you know what I mean where it's no different than living in a camper where you have onboard electricity all the time because I also like the primitive aspect of camping you know the tent the whole outdoors you get away from that whole modern civilization thing so I don't know how far I really want to go with at least right now you know maybe later when I turn it into a van life thing in retirement then maybe yeah get up flip the switch turn on the coffee pot whip out your folding chair and 
sit outside and drink coffee. Fucking A right. You know, why not? By then I've earned it. But I want to experience the wake up with a little bit of chill on your nose and go outside and make a fire. And then, you know, go to the lake, get some water, filter it if you have to, I probably would, and boil water for coffee. You know, in the meantime, split a little wood for the day. Nothing wrong with either one of those lives, I think. You know, it just depends on... It really depends on the person, you know, because there's going to be days that I'm going to want to wake up and just go do something, too. So it's nice to have that flip and switch technology in a camper van where you can get up and make your coffee and move on. Human footprints. That's the first I've seen. But I know why. Right down there is the bridge. And that bridge goes to the uh, bike trail. It, walk, it goes over to the bike trail, so a lot of people make use the bike trail and this trail as a loop. people now actually because I've seen a couple cars come in since I've been here I'm getting kind of hungry so what I'm thinking is we'll get back to the van maybe uh, head to a whole different area and hope that the sun burns off this fog Good to get out of here. These footprints are all fresh from today because it snowed last night. So there was people here this morning getting their exercise in already. It was about 12.30 when we took off from the break there. So we're probably a little left at 1 o'clock right now. Usually I go up on the ridge top, but we can't see the lake anyway, so stay in the lowlands, maybe we'll see some deer.
be great if it was a moonlit night walking this trail with these oak trees in the fog. That'd be so cool. A little bit creepy, but that's what makes it cool. sure what I was going to get into today so I brought stuff for hiking and small game hunting but I came here Mason mainly because it's paved roads all the way in and I wasn't sure what the snow was going to be like so I came here first you can't hunt here so cut through this way. Yep. I don't know why they just don't make a trail here. Usually I take the trail that walks across the top of that ridge right there. But usually you can see the lake. <laughs> but being so foggy, I decided to stay down here. These little cabins, you can rent these. And they're actually quite nice. There's uh, two bunk beds in them. So four beds. And basically just shelter but there's a wood stove and I think there's wood here to buy yeah see there's the cart right there you can see the tracks yeah, somebody was staying in that one might be the people that are actually hiking show you but I remember when I was younger cleaning cabins at a lake resort you know getting them cleaned up for fall and for the winter packed away the doors are open for shelters but I'm not just gonna go tramping through their wet feet after they got them all cleaned and ready to go I'm a little more respectful than that. The sun is actually making shadows. So we might get lucky. Oh, that's as modern as you're going to get in a campground. There's where the other trail came in. Hopefully kept walking and didn't cut through the woods to get onto this little trail here. But... And there's another trail that goes up there, goes to the ridge top. There's a few trails to 
walk around in here. But they basically just go to the campsites. There's a lot of walk-in campsites here. I couldn't even guess how many. Probably 40 or 50 throughout these whole, all these woods. There's a lot of them. If I had to guess, anyway. 30 to 50, let's put it that way. Yeah, I can definitely tell that I haven't been hiking in a while. My hips, holy cow. And all I have in my backpack is one water bottle and camera equipment and a few snack bars, protein bars. That's it. So it's not like I'm carrying a big load here. I haven't done this in too long, that's all. Yeah, it's just pretty wide open through here. In the summertime, not so much. There's a little bit of ground coverage with the thicker stuff, but easy enough to walk through if you had a, you know, five or six families in here camping close by to each other. You could easily get, there's trails to each campsite pretty much anyway because of that over the years. Nice day to be up in here. So much moisture in the air, I don't know if I dare get the drone out. I don't know how good it is for it. Oof. Up here is where you um, the showers, the bathroom, where all the carts are at, and probably where the firewood's at. There's a few camp spots up here in the wide open too. Like if you had a toe behind camper all the way up to a gooseneck fifth wheel camper. There's a couple of sites out here on the yard and you can fit them. And the only reason why I know that is because it was two of them here last year. And I didn't know they could even fit here. Yeah, these are the showers around the other side of the building over there. On the back side is where you can clean your fish and a, oh, there's a sink there and a hose and all that. For taking care of your fish. These are the carts that you haul your firewood. Over here is a firewood. Yeah, right here. There's two spots for um, pull behind trailers. There's a firewood right here. There's some here, and I believe there's some over here. Oh, well, there's a little bit in there, but not a whole lot of people here in the winter time. So it doesn't take a whole lot of wood. This is where they store the bike racks, evidently. But there's trails that go all down through. There's the other. That's the lake right there that we were kind of walking beside of the whole time. But um, there's trails that walk alongside that. And you can walk all the way around that lake. The bike trail. 
bicycle trail as part of it. Most of the, well, in this park, all, and I say that like I'm pretty sure all reservations are done online. There is no office here for that kind of thing. Like I said back in the beginning of the video, there's an office here, but it's primarily a um, maintenance office. I mean, they got some information and stuff there, but I'm pretty positive that you do not go there to pay to rent or camp or anything. Because down um, where the bike rentals are, that's also where you pay for kayaks and canoes and watercrafts. So, unless you pay for camping there too, which I'm pretty sure you do not. Last I knew, those cabins that you just walked by, um, it's, sometimes you're lucky if you can get one to have reservations on them for a year or more. You know, like this, this summer coming, it's already taken, I'm sure. I'm sure of it. You'll be lucky if you get one this summer. Really lucky. It's a nice place to roam around in the winter because there's just not a lot of people here. I hiked here last winter really early when there was a lot of snow a knee deep snow and it took me forever to get around places um, there was nobody here and I was a little worried because if I got stuck back here or whatever <laughs> nobody's coming in here to go hiking or anything so I'll be back here a while There's deer prints all over right here. Look at this. Isn't that just crazy or what? Just coming through that thicket. That's for the bike trail. There's a van right there. I don't know if you can see the van, but it's starting to break up. Still not quite enough though. But let's go back to the van, take a break. Eat a couple protein bars. Let's see how it looks. If it doesn't look like it's going to clear up, I'll just take off and go to another spot. I'll actually go to a hunting spot.